Should old acquaintance be forgot and never brought to mind? It's New Year's time tonight, we all turn a page for Auld Lang Syne. I don't know if that makes sense to you, because it doesn't fit for me. Welcome back to the phase vlog, the very last one of 2015, because as of midnight tonight, it's going to be 2016. Now, hopefully your year was a good one, but if not, I want to share a story that might help you have a better one next year. I love New Year's Eve as a holiday. Uh, it, it ranks as one of my favorites, not because, oh, it's a brand new start and I get to make resolutions that I'll not do. No, I love the idea of a fresh page being turned. New Year's symbolizes, at least for me, not a chance to, for a do-over, but a chance for a better next chapter. I like to live my life within the narrative of a story being written. I'm not in charge of it per se. I, I have some choices, but ultimately I'm not the one in charge of it because I'm impacted by forces outside my ability to control at all. So I like this concept of starting a new chapter in my journey, which includes my family, my friends, tons of people, not just me. And I love this idea so much that as a youth pastor, I used to host New Year's Eve parties with teenagers ranging from middle school to high school, sometimes even college age. Every year we'd have a lot of fun games, good food, we would watch movies, we'd celebrate the ball drop, Really, it was a big party, and we'd stay up all night. And as I got older, I regretted staying up all night more and more. This tradition for me stretches back to my own time as a high schooler, where my youth group I was in would host a New Year's party that was pretty much the same thing. Games, food, staying up all night, watching the ball drop. And I can remember one year, uh, very clearly, uh, it taught me a lot of things about doing a New Year's Eve party. but. I can remember one year very clearly, uh, our leaders had decided that we were going to watch the ball drop on the NBC feed, um, you know, the Peacock, you know, every basic channel was doing their own, they just happened to settle on NBC. And that year Jay Leno was hosting. Now this was during the era of Monica Lewinsky and it depends on what your definition of is is. And so shortly before midnight. Uh, Leno cut to a live outside feed that featured a Bill Clinton impersonator and they did a countdown from 10 and between 10 and 1 this impersonator's pants slowly slipped down his legs so at 1 the pants were on the ground celebrating Happy New Year. Our leaders quickly switched that feed and we finished up the night watching I think ABC's feed. Uh, I really don't remember because it doesn't stick out that much. But the rest of the night was was great. Uh, I was able to spend time celebrating with friends and hearing lots of encouragement for my next year. One of my favorite things about New Year's over the years has been spending it working with teenagers. And sometimes we do a retreat, sometimes it'd just be a lock-in at the church. But during those times, my favorite parts were hearing students share their stories of their past year and more often than not they were stories of pain and suffering and just hurt and it's not my favorite part because I like hearing about the pain of others it's my favorite part because that gave me a chance to inhabit their story to take some of their pain onto myself and at least in that moment live it with them I was able to encourage them and help build them up and to help them see that the next year is just minutes away. And it's a new chapter, it's a fresh start. Not a restart, but a fresh start. New, new part of their story. And that was my favorite part for many years. Being able to help them see that better doesn't happen right away, but it will. 
and that they have a gift, a life that God has given for them to live, and he's bringing better down the road. And that was my favorite part for years. And as they grow older, it's going to be my favorite part of New Year's Eve with my own children. This is why I love New Year's Eve. So for this year, I hope that your 2015 has been full of joy and happiness, and I hope that it's been full of some trials, because we grow better during the tough times than we do during the easy times. Those tough times force us to break out of the shell that we've created. And they're painful, but we learn from them. And so I do hope that there have been some trials. I don't hope that they have been life shattering because even though you go through those, I don't wish that upon anyone. And I hope that this next year, this 2016, continues to build upon the life that God's granted you to live, the life that he's authoring that is better than you could know because better does come even if it doesn't come right away. That's my hope for you. That's my wish for you this New Year's. So that's all I have for you this year. Not this week, this year. Woo! So you keep coming back in 2016, you keep watching, and I promise I will keep telling you stories that are worth hearing. Happy New Year.